<laughs> um, AJ, law of attraction, is that when you've passed as well or yes. is that? The whole spirit world is actually based, the way it's designed is actually uh, quite a loving way in that it's based around law of com law of compensation and law of attraction. If, if we passed and um, we thought we had a great development in love, when in reality we actually didn't, and we went off to play in the harps, we'd actually never develop in love, would we? We'd still go with this these injuries or whatever we have within us. So the way God has designed it is that when I pass, I'm immediately in a place which will sh reflect to me my true soul condition. Um, the people around me, will all, it will all be based on the law of attraction just like it is here. And so that gives me an opportunity to work through whatever law of compensation or whatever um, you know injuries I have inside of me, any harms that I've done to others um, and any hurts that I need to feel and release for myself. The trick is when people don't understand the truths that AJ is explaining, then they go to a place and think, oh, this is it, I really stuffed up. Um, they don't understand that actually they have the opportunity to, to move through these injuries. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So, so understand the law, of every law you're learning about that I've been talking to you about in all of these discussions that you've seen, all apply just as much in the spirit world as they do here. So they're actually more obvious. And they're more obvious, as Mary points yeah. out, yeah. So you'll see, in fact, one of the things you'll notice when you do pass, shortly after you pass generally, you'll see how your life on earth was determined by the law of attraction. So you know the nasty next door neighbour who's bashing on your window or, you know, upsetting you or the, na the, the neighbour behind you has a barking dog that annoys you all night. All of those things were all part of your law of attraction. And when you pass, often you start seeing that that's the case, right? And, uh, and you see it even more than when you, you're here. You see, here on Earth, we have a tendency of flicking into this intellectual space of trying to create our life rather than seeing that everything's created by our soul condition. And so, you know, we had a talk last night, didn't we, about that, how it's so easy on Earth to ignore your law of attraction. Well, in the spirit world, it's impossible to ignore your law of attraction. Um, and so a lot of things change quite a lot in the spirit world. Here in the, you know, on earth, we can often ignore the law of compensation. And the law of compensation is the principle what you sow, you reap. In other words, if some bad things are happening to you, often it can be the result of things that you've done or you believe inside of your heart about others that are, that are, that are, that are not about love either. Now, in the spirit world, you'll start feeling the effects of the law of conversation. Firstly, when you look in the mirror and you see your body, all of its shape and its distortions and everything are all a part of the law of conversation. So, there are cert all of the laws you're learning about here are exactly the same in the spirit world, but even more pronounced in one major way. And that is, here on Earth, you can live next door to a really lovely, kind person who's reflecting love all the time, even when you are not in that state. In the spirit world, all of the people who you're living with are in exactly the same state you are. Right? So you imagine if you're a person who murdered on earth. Every single person you're living with when you pass will be all murderers or people who wanted to murder. So you imagine that <laughs> environment. Like on earth here quite often, uh, you know, we can, we can we can steal money from other people through all sorts of so-called legal methods uh, and create our own wealth, right? And then when we pass, we'll actually be in one of the lower spheres of the, uh, of the lower, uh, uh, you'd call it probably a region of the first sphere in the hills. And there won't even, we won't even have a house at all probably in, in, our, in that condition. And we'll wonder what just happened. like. You know, all of a sudden, I could create my beautiful environment before by stealing from others. Now, I've got the result of that in the spirit world. So there's a lot of things that get imposed upon us very rapidly about and knowledge about our own condition, which is often very distressing for, for spirits when they pass. Yeah. But if we, you, you know, if we use that, like we're in this place, and it's there perfectly to trigger the emotion that we've been avoiding all of our earth life anyway. If we have that knowledge, then we can move on from that place very rapidly. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, up the back, thanks. Uh, can we go into the mic system because we're recording it from the microphones. So it just has to be on all the way up. That's it. What about um, if uh, somebody is sick here on Earth for a long period of time? Yep. How does that affect them the, in the next world? In their passing? In their passing. Yep. Um, there's probably... Sorry? That's your brother. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Hi. Um, <laughs> um, there's... A, Oh, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> if they've been sick for oh, a long if they've time. been sick, yeah. Um, what happens if they've been sick for a long time? There's two possible things that will happen. Firstly, you may get sick for a long time, but actually have a complete knowledge of the spirit world from what you've learned and have a really accurate knowledge of the spirit world. Now, if you pass with having a really, really accurate knowledge of the spirit world, then generally the sicknesses that you have on earth don't affect you very much you have a period of recovery, if you like, of your spirit body, because sickness is also impact upon the spirit body. The spirit body sort of recovers quite rapidly, though. And so you have a period of recovery, but you won't need to have a, lo a long period of convalescence, if you like. You'll have a fairly short period of convalescence, and then you'll be attracted to what it, whatever your soul condition is. And you'll go to a certain location of where your home was created in the spirit world through your soul condition. If you've passed without having very much knowledge of the spirit world, and it's been a long process, and when I say knowledge, a feeling-based knowledge of the spirit world, where you feel it to be true, um, when you pass, what will happen is you'll be kept in a place that's like, sort of like a hospital or a hospice, um, and you'll probably be kept asleep for some time. Uh, and while you're sleeping, uh, a lot of different plants and uh, things are brought to you and are helped help you to actually recover in your spirit form and your spirit body eventually regenerates until such a point where you wake up so you sort of have a long period of sleeping like in a hospital if you like and then after then your physical body will have a lot of repairs done to it so you won't feel like you have the illness at all if you have no knowledge at all about the spirit world and your soul condition is quite poor and you have big drawing, a big energy draw from the earth in, a, in that lots of people grieve you and, and you don't have very much time to go stay asleep then. What often happens is you're automatically pulled back to the earth and you also often believe yourself to still have the same uh, physical condition. And, uh, and that can be quite damaging to, to other people on earth because you may connect with them energetically and then they start developing the same physical condition. You may also um, have a series of emotions that cause you to stay earthbound and very interested in what's happening on the earth. And you may start spending a lot of your time interested in other family members and particularly young family members who you may influence. And you may have even cause them to get the same kind of physical condition. And this is the reason why there are things such as like child onset leukemia and so forth which are often caused by spirit attachment of a spirit who passed with cancer, a family spirit who passed with cancer. And this is the reason why a lot of those kind of so-called diseases are thought to be genetic. In reality, what's happening is the spirit who passed has the had the cancer, still believes themselves to have the cancer, still has the same emotional injuries that created their cancer, and then they connect to a child uh, like one of their relatives generally, it might be a grandchild or something that they have a lot of interest in, and then that child may develop cancer symptoms as well through their connection. And sometimes the spirit notices that they're doing it and steps away and so the child recovers, and sometimes the spirit doesn't notice they're doing it and doesn't step away and the child actually dies from the same thing the spirit themselves died of. So there, there is a lot of different experiences. Uh, what I'm basically saying is that every single experience is very unique. And uh, it depends a lot on what's going on inside of you as to what the experience will be. So, but generally, if you've had an illness on Earth, you'll be either, you'll stay earthbound with the illness or you'll convalesce for various periods of time. Uh, I had a young friend of my, one of my sons, who's about 18 and he died from a massive aneurysm in the brain um, 
is that what it's called an aneurysm mm -hmm. in the brain yeah and he just he just passed instantly he was just walking and he just killed over dead and um, he actually was kept asleep for a long time in the spirit world because his mother was grieving him so much that nobody could sp if he was if he if he was allowed to wake um, he would have been so drawn to his mother that he wouldn't have done anything else and so what happened was uh, the spirits surrounding him who looked after his passing tried to keep him asleep for as long as possible um, so that mum could deal with her grief which would have less of an impact on him when he woke up and so when he woke up he had less of an impact on him and my boys talked to him about because they, they, one of his friends they talked to him about the spirit world and even though his mum's still grieving quite a lot uh, she's not having a very high effect on him and what he's feel, feeling free to do in the spirit world. So it very much depends on this interaction between what's happening in your own condition, what happens in your belief systems, what's happened to you physically, and also what's, happen what's happening in the, in the hearts and minds of the people who you've left behind as to how you progress in the spirit world. Yeah. And Mike... I'd just like to ask about um, a suicide. My nephew committed suicide about 13 years ago. He was 19. Mm -hmm. um, jumped off the skillion at Terrigal. Mm -hmm. um, but consequently, he, I, f I feel he actually attached himself to one of our sons right. <coughs> who has had a lot of um, memories of his experiences on, on the earth. Of his life. So you, yeah. yeah, yeah um, he, so he wasn't actually born at the time, yeah. uh, our second son. Uh, so for a long time, we actually as a family thought that he was a reincarnation, reincarnation of, the, yeah. Yeah, of the nephew. And since experiencing your teachings, I've actually um, changed my mind about that. Yeah. Um, but I feel he's still attached to, to our son. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just with suicide, like I guess it's that kind of wrenching out of, of your body. I, it's such a, you know, traumatic death mm. um, how do I help without imposing on his free will mm -hmm. uh, for him to to move through that yeah. and and not be so influencing on my on my son on your son yeah good very good question do you want to answer that one or? I'll start and AJ will definitely <laughs> finish <laughs> um, I, I would just say that a bit further away from you so it doesn't pop <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, always when dealing with spirits is to remain loving with them you know obviously your nephew uh, was in a really dark place when he passed and I imagine a lot of your family uh, really grieved him as well yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. yeah which would have created a big pull for him as well um, so my guilt too, but why you, still around? Uh, you feel it's your guilt yeah yeah, yeah. So actually you dealing with a lot of your emotions around this incident will help help him a lot. Yeah, yeah. 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 And you can you can talk to him even if you can't hear him you, you, just by acknowledging his presence and asking him to listen and and to explain to him the truths that you know about the spirit world now that there's a lot of love there for him that he just needs to deal with some some big emotions for himself and that and tell him lovingly that he's actually influencing your son which is not very loving to your son's free will and just to point out some truths to him yeah because yeah. in a way it's a little like um, let's say you had a friend who was a was a bad influence on your son when I say bad influence he was he was encouraging your son to do things that your son wouldn't normally do and he was an older friend and you were young son. you'd at least talk with him wouldn't you you'd at least speak with him and so it's no different if they've passed than if they've than if they're here on earth still still speak with him as if he's here and um, can I talk a little though about suicide and the condition that generates it um, and this might help you in terms of helping helping your nephew um, firstly a person who suicides generally uh, goes through a few basic emotions one of the emotions generally is that nobody cares for me right? nobody loves me nobody cares for me my life's a real mess and it's never going to look any better than this so that's an emotion that he may have had when he passed did he actually leave a note or anything or he just yeah, yeah. and did he say much in the note I can you just speak in 
Can, you know it off heart. Can you tell me a little of it? To all, the, all of those that I've loved and known, thanks. I've had a great time, but it's time to move on. Right. Um, yours in good nature, Aaron. Right. So very, very simple. Very, yeah, very, very simple, straight to the point. Um, yeah. It sounded more like he was, for my sister and her husband, it sounded more like he was going to go on a fishing trawler or something. Like, you know, yeah. he just walked the half an hour down to the skillion and the, a, a fisherman found him yeah. that morning, like the next morning. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so it was, but like you were saying before about when you know, someone passes and then you, you hear all these different experiences and you hear what people are saying about you, it was almost like that quite a few people in his life had a different part of the puzzle when it came to his life. Mm -hmm. And then when he passed, everybody got together and started to fit those puzzle pieces together. together but nobody had the whole picture mm. of what he was going through and I th so what was he going through at the time that, that, um, that it's become clear? he's 19 yeah. he was a star football player at school yeah. uh, left school his dad was in the Navy for a long time um, so he didn't know what he wanted to do yeah. he actually applied for the Navy a couple of times but he was a sleepwalker yeah. so they actually kept um, Saying no, 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 no. You can't. Uh, which disappointed, I know, his dad. Yeah. Um, he ended up working at the chickadee chicken factory um, in third grade football. So he went from first grade star to third yeah. grade. I think he felt he was a great disappointment to his family. family. Yeah. Uh, he he came as a middle son of three boys, yeah. and consequently, who he's attached to in in our family is my middle, middle son, son of three boys. Yeah. Um, and he looks very much like him actually too. Yeah. Uh, so he, he used to wander around at night, he used to talk a lot at night. Yeah. I actually, um, we actually used to do a, a bit of meditation together and when he was 16, um, him and I were, were meditating together and we were very close and he stopped breathing. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, he basically at that time had said that a spirit had told him to stop, breathe, stop breathing. Yep. So I always felt that was he being influenced to end his life at yep. that time. So Certainly. that's a big thing for, you know, that I've had to kind of carry. Yep. Um, and I had to actually bring him out of this um, place that mm -hmm. he was in. Mm -hmm. um, and he, his eyes changed colour. Mm -hmm. he, he was wandering around the house. So he had a lot of influence at that time. Yep. Um, you know, through spirit, uh, and that was quite an amazing, you know, experience. And then he was fine for a couple of years, and then this, you know, th right. basically three years later, yeah. he ended his life. Yeah. So um, I feel he was greatly influenced by by spirit. Do you mind if I talk specifically about what's happened? Yes. To, to him? Um, no. <laughs> you don't mind. You don't mind. You, you want you want me to do that? Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Um, Okay, um, you're right. He, the reason for his sleepwalking was actually spirit. It was to do with the spirit attached to him. Um, and he was very mediumistic all of his life, uh, your nephew. So, so he was easily influenced by some spirits as a result of that. You're correct in saying like about his, his feelings of being a disappointment to the family. Um, he was enjoying his life, but he always felt that he would always come up and, and be disappointing. Now, what happened was that was this spirit fe felt the same feelings as he felt, and the spirit had a viewpoint that you might as well die and move on. You know what I mean? Like get out of this life was the viewpoint of the spirit. And so, what happened was this spirit actually motivated him to suicide. Right? Now, the, the, you can see the big discrepancy between his letter to you and what he's actually doing. The letter was saying, it's time for me to move on, and yet what is he actually doing? He's connecting to your son and not moving on. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So, so his personal emotions are of big... He, he was very surprised that he actually did what he did. He was very surprised that he suicided himself, I'm saying after his past. Sorry, can I just say to you that his injuries, yeah. um, it seemed to be that he actually possibly changed his like halfway down or whatever changed his mind because he actually had um, dirt 
under his fingernails. So he'd actually possibly struggled yeah. down the yeah. cliff and gone, oh my God, what have I done? Yes. Yeah. Um, and landed on his back. Yeah. So he's, uh, th there actually was a you know, discrepancy of whether he actually jumped or, or fell. Or fell, yeah. But he was over the fence. There's actually, if you've been up to the yeah. skillion, there's a, like a guardrail kind of thing. Yeah. He, he was actually out there. He chose to step off, but then in the moment of the choice, yeah, he didn't want to make the choice. No. Does that make sense? Yeah. And a lot of people who suicide, by the way, have this exact same thing because a lot of people who suicide are heavily motivated by spirit with the same kind of emotions and then in the in the act itself want to undo the act but but often it's too late particularly for 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 boys or men because most men choose an act that is irreversible whereas many women who choose the act often uh, choose a less uh, you know a less damaging act like maybe pills or something like that that, that you can actually get out of at a certain time. But a lot of the men don't, and this is why a lot of, you know, particularly boys that age through to the age of 25 generally do pass when they choose to suicide. But, but he had that feeling he didn't want to suicide himself. He felt motivated and pushed into it in a way by the spirit who was with him. So what's happened now is he he's, he's in this, he, he doesn't want to go to the spirit world. He, he feel, and, and this is why he's reconnected with your son. He doesn't want to go to the spirit world because the location in the spirit world isn't very good uh, because of his lack of love of self. And uh, what he needs is some help and there's plenty of people who want to help him in the spirit world who have been suicides themselves, who have worked through the emotions that he needs to work through, which are emotions about being a disappointment to other people. Um, he needs to work through that group of emotions. Uh, you can help him a lot do that. Um, by actually speaking with him uh, and 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 talking to him frankly firstly about what he's doing to your son and um, and because uh, unfortunately because he has this group of emotions there's a high likelihood your second son's going to have the group of emotions as well right and and as you know that seems to be what's developing his personality seems to mirror he, he actually the moment he was born he was six months old going on 15 yeah two years old going on 19 he yeah. always he was out of our three boys has pushed and pushed and pushed yeah he's 11 years old now yeah and he's actually settled down a, a lot more the older he gets the more settled he gets yeah. but he he was always and we you know uh, I guess I was very very strongly feeling he was a reincarnation of him what what reason why that's happened is because your nephew felt this deep disappointment of, of living an unfulfilled life and now he's connecting to your son. He's wanting your son to live a completely fulfilled life. Like So there's a lot of uh, heavy uh, pushing, I suppose you could say, onto your son um, to actually live a completely fulfilled life that your nephew didn't have the chance to live. And, uh, and so he's quite... Um, uh, Pushy is probably the best word, like with your son at times, which then makes your son appear to be quite pushy with in, the rest of the family. In a hurry, in a a hurry, hurry to grow in up. life, yeah. yeah. And the truth is that uh, um, it would benefit both of them to separate for a period of time and the relationship be redefined. It's like your, your nephew could, in fact, be a, a really good help to you, his cousin, but but. Um, only if your nephew works through some of his, his issues in the spirit world and some of his emotions, which he's avoiding doing. So the key is to talk to him about that. And there are a lot of groups of spirits who have been suicides on earth, who have worked through their emotions completely, who can help your nephew greatly. And it's just a matter of talking to him about that being an alternative, that he can actually have a fulfilled life in the spirit world. He can actually have a lot of the things he felt he missed out on, things like relationships and so forth, he can actually have in the spirit world. And he d he's just not aware that he can have them at this point. And so there's a, it would be very helpful for him to have a discussion with some spirits in the spirit world about what is possible for him to experience, because at the moment he's sort of making his own guesswork about what he could experience. And so that would help him a lot to actually disconnect. And when he does reconnect with your son, because he will always have an affinity with him, he, will can, he can reconnect with him in a more loving manner rather than in this manner that he's currently connecting to him, which is, which is sort of almost pushing your son in a certain direction without your son really having his free will, his free will is being quite dominated by 
by uh, his, his cousin. The, the other issue for um, your nephew is in the spirit world is that um, he's quite annoyed with this spirit who influenced him, which is understandable. Is he still, are they still connected now? No, no, because the spirit who influenced him is actually in a darker condition than your son is. Um, oh, sorry, than your nephew is, I'm saying. Uh, so your nephew is in a brighter condition. He's still in the first sphere in, 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 uh, in not a good condition. But the spirit who was, a, who was influencing him on earth was actually in a darker condition than your nephew currently is. And so he, they, that the instant he passed, there was a disconnection between the two of them. Um, so he, he's not, never even met the man, as far as I'm aware who was influencing him. And it was another boy who had the same kind of experience as your nephew has had on earth. But uh, the, the issue is to talk with him about all of these things and he will listen. Um, if you'll notice if your son, if you start talking and notice your son's behaviour when you're talking to your nephew, your son will go into a very distractive behaviour if you start talking to your nephew and your nephew doesn't want to hear. You follow me? So your son will like get up and be distracted and distract you and want to get away from the whole conversation. That's what it will feel like. Um, when I say talk to your nephew, you can talk to him without your son being present, but your son will come and distract you if your nephew does not want to hear. Do you follow me? So you'll actually find that your nephew, his openness to hearing what you've got to say will be, will be displayed through your son's actions. Um, so if you notice that happening, talk to him about, you're now distract distracting me, you're now actually harming my son by pushing him around and getting him to do things because you don't want to hear and this is not very nice behaviour, this is not loving behaviour. And talk to him about love and, and how love is displayed. It's something that he didn't feel he had too much of on earth. And I always felt that he wanted me to be his mum. Yep. Because... Yeah. Um, he feels very connected to your family. Yeah. yeah as a result. <clears throat> and that's I felt that he when he passed, he he then 